What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we are going to be building out the get by ID. And essentially what a get by ID is going to do is it's going to allow us to get a Pokemon individually, sometimes known as a detail endpoint. And a detail endpoint is important because it's the endpoint that you use when you actually click on the list. So what do I mean by that? Let's just say you are scrolling through Facebook. A Facebook is the get all. The, a Facebook feed is the get all. It's like a list of users. But if you want to click on a individual user or in our case, an individual Pokemon, the endpoint that we have to make is going to be a detail. And the first place that we are going to start, obviously, since we've already got our actual repository built out is we are going to start with the service. So we're gonna go in here and as always, we're going to use our DTO to return and we're going to say get Pokemon by ID. And the actual value that we are going to pass into there is going to be an int and we are going to once again pass in a ID. So once we do that, uh, IntelliJ is going to let us know we have a related problem but it's a problem we expected, so we can go ahead and click into there, and then we're gonna go ahead here, and we're going to go ahead, and we are going to implement the methods. And once we get here, all it really boils down to is that we're going to go into our actual repository and get out a Pokemon. So we're gonna go Pokemon, and is equal to Pokemon repository dot find by ID. So we're going to find by ID, and we are going to pass in our ID, and and here we're going to actually utilize our exception handler. So we went through all that work to make exception handlers, and this is where it's really going to shine. Now we can just go in here, we can say Pokemon not found exception. And now we have a nice exception that we can use in order to let the user know. So we could say Pokemon could not be found. Okay, and that is looking good. So next thing that we need to do is we actually need to return this. We don't need to go to the controller just yet. I actually need to return this and we are going to have this map to a DTO and that DTO that we are going to put in there is going to be our Pokemon. Next thing is we can actually just go into our controller. So once we go into our controller, really easy to do because we've already pretty much taken out all of the logic out of here. So we can go ahead and get rid of this whole entire thing right here. And go, down he <clears throat> go down here. And we are just going to say return new response entity. And we are going to have it return an okay. Let's see here, dot okay. And we are going to say, we are going to go into our Pokemon service and we are going to get Pokemon ID. We are going to pass it the int. And for some reason we have an error here, cannot resolve symbol, okay. Uh, we don't need the new. Whenever you have just the uh, one without the alligator brackets, do not put the new in front of it. I don't know exactly how that's supposed to work, but that's the way that it works. Let me see here. So we got another, looks like we got another error. Response entity. Okay, this, so this needs to be a response entity. And we are going to return a Pokemon DTO, just like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it out, see if it works. Just gonna go ahead and get out Postman and go to my necessary API endpoint. And I think we only have two Pokemon in here, so let's just go ahead and try for the first one to see if that works. So we're gonna say, okay, looking good. So we already have our Pidgey and that worked out a lot quicker than I thought it was. So let's just go ahead and start on another um, actual Pokemon, or let's go ahead and start on another service endpoint since we're already out here. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do, as always, we're gonna go right back to our service and what we need to do is we need to start working on our update. So the update is going to be the next one. So we've already got our get by ID. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go Pokemon DTO and we go here and we got Pokemon DTO and make sure we pass in this amount and we're going to pass in our int again. Okay, so notice that there's actually two parts right here. We've got our Pokemon DTO and we've also got our int ID. We need both of them because once again, we're actually editing 
the DTO. And we also need it because we need to have this value to tell which one to be able to identify it. So notice the difference there. And that's also kind of an important thing because you see that in every single update request almost always. Okay, so now we've got our update Pokemon. Uh, the update Pokemon service, or uh, yeah, the service is going to be fairly complex. So just kind of hang in there for a second. So we're going to go Pokemon. We're going to go Pokemon repository. So what we need to do is we need to find the actual Pokemon by the ID. And then we will actually go into the actual object and essentially just edit it manually. Okay, so we go in here. And we've got new Pokemon not found exception. Um, and I will say Pokemon, Pokemon could not be updated. So we'll go here, Pokemon could not be updated. Okay, so we have that. Now what we need to do is we need to go into the actual Pokemon object and we need to set them with the Pokemon DTO that we got uh, from the actual API endpoint. Because we're using the DTO, we're using the DTO to actually edit the data, but the actual data type that we have to send to the database is going to be a Pokemon because if you don't, if you send a DTO to the database, it's going to give you an error because it's not the right type. So just always remember that whenever you're putting data into the database, it always has to be the exact same type. So we go in here and it's um, already got type. We actually need the name. So I, I messed this up right here. So we need name. And then we'll go down here and then we'll do the actual type. So we go set set type is equal to Pokemon DTO dot get type. We need to pass in the get inside of the set because that's the actual object that we're trying to manipulate. So now we're going to go into here and we're going to say this is our updated Pokemon. And this is actually going to return a value. So we're going here. We'll go Pokemon repository dot save. And we'll go ahead and put in our Pokemon. And if you look right here, let me see. So if you go save, go right here, you'll see the actual return type. So the actual return type that is going to return, let me see, is going to be the actual value. So it says the S right here. So the return type is going to be the Pokemon. Also, we already have the ID. You may notice here that we don't actually alter the ID. We don't have to alter the ID because that value is already within this object right here. Hence why there's nothing there to actually update the ID itself. So if you, if you didn't see the ID, just remember with returns, you're not going to update. You never want to update the ID on a return because then that would make it a new record. And it's just like, why, why don't you just create a new record? Okay, so now we have the update. That's looking good. Now we can actually go into our controller and we can do the exact same thing. And if you notice, it's actually kind of, once you get all the infrastructure built out, all of the stuff's pretty easy. So we go into here, then we're gonna go Pokemon DTO, then we're gonna go response. Then we'll say Pokemon service dot update Pokemon. So we're gonna go right inside of our service. Then we're going to pass it the Pokemon DTO. And I need to actually change this. Pokemon DTO. So here, we change that to Pokemon DTO just like that. And the actual response entity that we're going to be returning is also a Pokemon DTO as well, too. And can't forget that we're also passing in our Pokemon ID. So we pass in our Pokemon DTO, then we have our ID right here. Our Poke Pokemon ID. So we're gonna go in here. Pokemon ID, just like that. Okay, then as always, we want to return a new uh, response entity. And within that response entity, we're going to return what we get back from the service. And we're also going to return an HTTP status okay to let the user know that this was in fact a uh, successful update. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this. What I am going to do is I'm going to take this, I am going to paste this into this detail. You don't have to do this either. If you just wanna type it out, that's okay too. But I'm going to go into my get detail, I'm going to paste this, and then I'm going to paste this into the actual update. And we don't need the ID. 
ID in the body. So what I'm going to do is what we should do is put the one up in the actual URL. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to update this and I'm going to go ahead and click the update, see what happens. And now we have PG24. Let's go into our get all and test to make sure that it's actually working um, as we think it should. And we have PG24 update right here. So our update's looking good. We've also got our get detail. Let's move on to the delete.